You don't hit my dog. You got to have people coming together and supporting one another. You got to have solidarity with each and every one of you. We're all Americans. When I was in the military, they called my barracks room the United Nations. Why? I could have up to 36 different nations in that room, and we never argued. In all those years, we never had one fight, one disagreement like that, you know, just intellectual disagreements, but nothing violent or emotional, you know. We all got along. The one thing we all agreed on was this. It was governments that caused all the hate and the divisiveness. It wasn't the people. The people all wanted love. They all wanted to go home and raise their children. They wanted jobs and a home and happiness. They wanted to be included. They just wanted to be accepted for who they were. They wanted the right to seek happiness. What happened to the liberty we have promised in the Constitution in our Founding Fathers' documents? Aren't we supposed to seek the way of, of the welcome to one another? And this, this path of, of liberty and righteousness that we're all trying to speak, this, this happiness, starts with love. And you know what else? It starts by giving. OWS is giving, and I see all of you here today, and I'm proud to say that I'm here with you. I'm proud to say that I'm one of you. I'm proud to say that I'm your supporter, and I'm very, very happy that you're doing this here today. I think it says a lot about the dignity and measure of America, and I think democracy starts right here. And I think it's a wonderful example. I think the world needs to see this. The world is watching you, too. I hope they are, and I hope they pay attention, and I hope they say, yay, Phoenix! Phoenix is doing it right. Phoenix is showing the way. The inclusiveness and love in Phoenix should spread all over this world to every, you know, the nations are created by governments. We just need to be people. Who do we really care about borders when you think about it? Don't we care about love and happiness and visiting relatives and traveling? Who cares about being restricted? detained, inspected, stolen from, confiscated from. Think about it for a minute. Only the government. So who's doing wrong here? Who's doing wrong? We elected our leaders to support us and to protect us, and guess what they're doing? It's oppression time. They're not doing what we sent them to do. And they need to learn the way of love, too. We need to bring them back down to this level of love and start them over again. You're doing it right, and I congratulate you, and I support you all the way. Thank you, AZ Vet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for anyone who hasn't met me yet, I'm Sister Mischief, Sister Mischievous Merrymaker, and I'm from the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, the Grand Canyon Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, actually. Um, and I will explain why I'm dressed like this, why I look like this later. But right now, I just want to focus on the moment, so I will answer those questions because I know several of you had them. Um, but right now, what I would like to say is that we all were writing our messages of hope for the world today, and the reason I asked us to write on Hope Flats is because I have been noticing that I've been getting caught up in the negativity and the reasons that I was angry and the things that I wanted to see changed, but I was focusing on them from a negative perspective. And I have a mantra in my life, all love, all joy, no guilt. And I felt like I was moving away from the joy and away from the love. So I wanted to manifest the things we want to see in the world through using more positive language of what, what do we want to see change? What do we want to see? What do we hope for? What are our wishes and dreams? And if you didn't get a chance to write on the flag, we'll let people write on it again later. But for now, we're going to read what we've got so far. Um, so I'm going to pass the mic. Yeah. Does it work? I hope we treat all human beings with respect, love, and dignity. Legalize homelessness. Equality in school. Equality for all mankind. Peace for all people. I have hope for a world where all can camp and be camping, without guilt and boundaries. One vision, one love, many hopes. Sister Odera, Grand Canyon Sisters. I hope there can be acceptance for all causes in the world. Postulant of the least, Grand Canyon Sisters. All right, this one says, I hope for a world where people grow up with compassion. I hope for changing humankind 
13 ACT UP individuals who were marching, clustered, a little, looking a little angry and a little scared at the same time with their signs. I don't know, I guess debating 13, it could have been more. And this was the last time there was a gay pride march in Irvine, California, which is where I grew up, one of the more conservative cities in Southern California, believe it or not. And um, the reason it was the last time is because my neighbors started throwing bottles at them. But the wonderful, joyous thing that I took from this moment was there was one person that stood out as a shining light, and it was Sister X. They called her Sister X because whether she was in face or out of face, you just couldn't tell the gender of this person. And then she embraced it, and she said, I am Sister Explosion. And she said, I am exploding with joy, I am exploding with light, I am exploding with love. I am exploding with righteous anger for the mistreatment of my people. And um, I didn't know any of that at the time. I was just like, what is that? Is it a clown? Is it a, you know, I have no idea what that is. And she danced over to me and she put her hand on my heart and she said, she said, you're fabulous, you're wonderful, the sisters love you. Now run along home, honey, you're not safe here. And I went home singing, we're here, we're queer, we're fabulous, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. And I embraced that, I knew I was not alone, I was not the only freak in the world anymore. I saw someone whose gender I couldn't identify, and I was like, hey, nobody's been able to identify my gender my whole life. Somebody in the world exists like me. So I come out dressed in mixed gender clothing and with my beard emphasized and wearing feminine makeup and acting all crazy because I want to empower myself and empower others to be themselves. All love, all joy, no guilt. So in that sense, I want to um, lift up the lives of all those that we've lost for being themselves. Um, last year we lost my friend Tay. She is from the Gila River Nation. Um, I have these feathers here for her, and for her brothers and sisters, from our indigenous people who we've lost due to transgender violence. They were given to me this morning at the Native American Transgender Sunrise Ritual, Transgender Day of Remembered Sunrise Ritual. It's beautiful, and I think we should do it every year, and we should remember our people every year. And I brought this, this is Kuan Yin. She was the first, uh, she, she is the transgender bodhisattva. Uh, for those who don't know, I, I'm very mixed eclectic spirituality type person. I'm pagan, I do Buddhist meditation. And, uh, she came to me the day after I was, I became a fully professed sister of perpetual indulgence on a ride up to Sedona. And I've had her ever since. I brought her to donate her to occupy for our altar, for our interfaith altar. And that's why the feathers and the sage were donated as well. Um, and someone brought some ocean water and Sandy brought a brazier. We're gonna put those over there on that wall with these um, current hope flags. I, and um, anyway, so Kuan Yin, when she was in one country, was identified as a male Buddhist monk. And when she arrived in the other country, was identified as a female. And so the transgender and transsexual people who at all have any leaning towards Buddhism tend to love Kuan Yin, <laughs> people who are gender diverse. So I'm adding her to that. And um, that's for everybody. The, these are for Tay and for everybody from the Native people. And this is for everybody else and specifically I would like to remember those forgotten whose names we don't know and who were not remembered by their proper gender name, gender and name when they were buried because unfortunately that happens way too often. So I'm sorry for bringing us down for a moment but I would like to remember their lives because they're beautiful wonderful people who are bravely living as themselves and I think that's what we're doing here. We're bravely living as ourselves despite people not always agreeing or understanding. I think we can all come together no matter what age, no matter what gender, no matter what orientation, creed, color, 
doesn't matter. We can come together. We are the 99% and we need to all work as the 100% to make the world a better place. I think that's what we're doing today, so thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else they want to share after that? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> okay, for those of you that have never seen me, <laughs> I'm Sandy. Uh, I'm part of Saber 99. Been active with them since uh, the group started on Facebook. Um, I agree a lot with what Sean, what Sean Michael's been saying and Sister Mischief. Um, I grew up with um, same feelings of being sick and not being a complete person uh, for a lot of my life. And when I finally accepted that I was gay and other, you know, parts of my sexuality and life, a lot of peace entered. And individuality became a very important thing to me. Individuality is why we're here. We are trying to be forced into molds that we do not fit in. They are trying to make us the same. They are trying to make us sheep. And I don't agree with that at all. That's one of the main reasons I'm here. Um, I celebrate individuality. I didn't know about the Transgender Day of Remembrance until today. I will be participating in it more often <coughs> after this. Um, any kind of individuality is important to me. You know, being able to celebrate individuality. Um, the other reason I'm here is to help promote the peace that we need to be able to continue. Okay? There was a lot of mixed feelings and a lot of frustration and a lot of anger happening here recently because of police actions and other things <coughs> happening in various parts of Occupy. That's why I'm here with the Brazier. Brazier was my idea uh, so that we could have something that could take our prayers and our thoughts up to the heavens but also help calm us. Uh, the lavender is for calming, the sage is for clearing negativity, the sandalwood <laughs> is for both. So, and I'll be bringing others down. Uh, I plan on being here a little bit more often if I can. So, thank you all for making me feel welcome. And I welcome you as part of my new family. Thank you. I think there are a lot of people, both inside this movement and outside, that are asking, what do queer issues have to do with Occupy? What do race issues have to do with Occupy? What do immigration issues have to do with Occupy? What do indigenous rights issues have to do with Occupy? After all, Occupy is all about money, right? 1% controls us by dividing us into groups and making us fear each other and hate each other. And the only way we can change that is to say no to that fear, to say no to that hate, to recognize that we're all freaks. We're just all different kinds of freaks. I just want to tell you that this movement fills me with so much hope and so much love that we can build a new kind of world where we don't let people turn us against each other, where we come together and take care of each other. And that's the start of I can only imagine what. So thank you all for just being so awesome. I'd like to invite everybody. There is a vigil. There's a vigil happening at five o'clock. 
at the uh, Pearl Harbor Memorial down by the state capitol uh, for the Transgender Day of Remembrance where they will be reading all of the names. I know it's over 200 names of all of the people who've been killed this year because of who they are and how they identify themselves. So if anyone would like to join us down there, you would be very, very welcome. Thank you. One of our fellow office hires passed away recently. I just wanted to have a moment of silence for Spencer. Someone said they'd like to sing an anti-war song. And I hope that's, uh, I remember when I was a child, I, I was raised a Mormon, really conservative, I'm a Republican. And there must have been a little, uh, Something I didn't know about my mom because she would play the Christian trio songs and things. And what I remember is, where have all the flowers gone? Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the flowers gone? Young girls pick them everyone. When will they go back to the When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all